and we're ready. Um, we are going to look at the uh, <laughs> Van cell. Okay. What do we have in one of the cells for an electrode, Mr. Mankey? Gold. Okay. So we have gold in one of them. And in the other one is what there, Spoden? TL or thallium. Okay. We have this going on. We've got this going on. If we look at our two things from the book, we have gold 3 plus plus 3 electrons becoming gold metal. And we have uh, thallium plus plus 1 electron becoming thallium. This has a potential of 1.5 volts. This has a potential of negative 0.34 volts. And when I walk around, I see a lot of wonderful things. What else? What's going to be in the solution here, Karen? AU3+. plus. How about over here, Rachel? TL+. Okay. So those are the ions that need to be in there. We'd have a wire that are connecting them. Okay. Um, and we also need a salt bridge. And the reason for the salt bridge is what, um, Ethan? So you can just keep moving across and keep the current flowing, right? Um, I'm just going to put, it uh, doesn't really matter, I'm going to put potassium chloride this time. So I'm going to put potassium nitrate, sodium chloride, it doesn't matter as long as it's an ionic compound. Okay? Which one of these two are going to be reduced on top here? Shauna, the gold or the thallium? Why? Reduction potential? Yeah. So this 1.50 is a reduction potential, which means, which means what, Shauna? It's more likely, or wants what more? It wants electrons more. So it wants electrons more, and it gets them. And it's going to take them from thallium. So the thallium is going to be flipped. So that's ones we're going to do this, and TL plus plus one electron. And now that voltage is going to be 0.34 volts. So if I want to get the voltage, remember when I, I'm going to have to multiply this all by three to add it to the gold. All right, because I'm looking for the overall cell reaction. And to do that, I need to add the gold to the, to the thallium, but I have to have electrons balance first. They have to be able to cancel out. So I'm going to multiply this by three. Remember, this is what we call an intensive property, so the potential is not multiplied by three, even though we multiply it by three to get the electrons equal. So this voltage does not change because we multiply it by three. So we're taking that and we're adding it to the gold, AU3 plus, plus three electrons, yield gold, and that's 1.50 volts. When I add them together, what do I get for a total voltage or your six? 1.84. And then my, this thing down here, my electrons are canceling. And I get three TIL, not TI, even though it looks like it. Yield 3Ti or 10L plus plus AU. That is the overall reaction. I need three thalliums for every one gold because each thallium only is giving away one electron. So I need three thalliums to give away an electron because the gold needs three. That's why it's balanced that way. Okay? Okay. All right? All right. Which one is our anode and which is our cathode? Which one is our anode and which is our cathode? Ashley Bartlett? Okay, this is our anode and this is our cathode. Why, Ashley Bartlett? TL is being oxidized, so remember, vowels go together. This is being oxidized. And the cathodes being reduced, vowels or consonants go together. The gold is being reduced. Remember reduction or gaining electrons? Reduction. Okay? Where are my electrons traveling in the wire up here, Brady Anderson? From left to right. Well, I don't know. Is it a joke? Which way is right? I agree. Nice work. And how do you remember that? A to C. 
So it always goes from the anode to the cathode, air conditioning. The electrons are traveling in the wire this way. And that, hopefully that makes sense to you because the thallium is losing electrons through the oxidation and it loses the electrons. The electrons travel through the wire and go to the gold. The gold gains them and becomes reduced. If I mass the two electrodes, which one would be heavier after running this for a while? If I mass the two electrodes, which one would be heavier after running this for a while? Why gold, John? It's gaining electrons, and look what's happening. The gold ions are becoming gold metal. So I would increase the, the size of the gold metal here, the electrode. The thallium electrode would be breaking down and becoming less than mass because it would be going into ion form. Okay? What about the salt bridge ions? Where are they traveling? Sean, where is the K plus traveling? Where are those ions traveling? Left to the cathode or right to the anode? Sorry. Cad ions travel to the cathode. The anions travel to the anode. So, K plus traveling to the cathode, Cl minus traveling to the anode. And these, these, these uh, um, ions are just there to keep the current flowing. Otherwise, the electrons would travel for a little bit. We'd have this big buildup of charge in the left and of negative charge, positive charge here, and it would just quit. They need to keep it going. So this is kind of a review of everything we've done kind of with galvanic cells up to this point, where things are coming from and what's happening. Questions so far? Part B. Okay. What is Part B asking us in 74? Ellen? For delta G and? And K. Yes. If you look, and I ask you to take out your green sheet with the formulas, so let's just look at a few of these so we know where this is coming from. So for the cell, we determine that the voltage is 1.84. If we look at the thermochemistry side, this is page 4, we have an equation that goes with delta G and with the uh, potential in it. So delta G equals what? Negative N F E. Everyone see that? See that on the bottom of your green sheet? Left bottom. N F E. What the heck do these things stand for? N is what? What was in regular chem? Moles. In this case, it's moles of electrons. F is, it's a constant. It's also on your sheet. It's called Faraday's constant. And it is 96,500 coulombs, which is charge, per mole of electrons. And then the E naught is just a potential that we just figured out. So we can solve for delta G. Note what's going to happen to the sign of delta G when we have a positive E. It's got to be negative every time, which means it's spontaneous. It's going to happen. Okay? If E naught is negative, that means that we don't have a circuit running um, that it's not going to work. So let's solve for it. Delta G equals moles of electrons. Well, how many, uh, how many uh, electrons needed to be transferred in that balanced equation that we just came up with? Three. So that's what we mean by moles of electrons. Three. It's how many are in the balanced equation? How many, if you multiply, say you multiplied one by three and one by two to get the six electrons. Yeah, six would be your answer here. And this is times 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons. They'll cancel times the voltage, which is 1.84. 
I gotta look at this voltage. That's my bad. There's a way to, that this all cancels and we get coulombs, but, or not coulombs. What do you think we're gonna get? Delta G. Kilojoules. So I can't remember all the canceling of the of the of the units. It works. Um. So if I solve for this, what do I get in my answer in, or what do I get for an answer? Put it in kilojoules, because right now it's it's in uh, joules. Negative 532 kilojoules. Oh my goodness. Let's, let's go to a whole number. Negative 533 kilojoules. So we've solved for delta G. How in the world can we get the next question, which is K? Remember this from the past. Delta G equals negative RT LNK. That's from back in the day. Okay, last week. Delta G, negative 55, oh boy. I mean, that's a big number in kilojoules. So we should end up with a really large K. Because K is, if it's moving towards the product side, it should be moving very far to the product side. R is 0 0.00831, because that would be in kilojoules. We change that to kilojoules. Our temperature, we're all at 298, right? 298K, LN of K. So do that in your calculators. 533 divided by 0 .00831 divided by 298. And then you're going to go anti-LN, or e to the x, right, of that number to find out K. What does that even mean? Does that mean that we've gone to completion pretty much when we that have that have a K? Yeah. Remember, if K is very, very large, that means that the products are huge compared to the reactants. So that means that it's pretty much totally to the right. It is not an equilibrium back and forth very much at all. It totally reacts to the right. And that's why we have such a large G because, or delta G. So a large delta G means that it's pretty far to the right also. If it's a small delta G, that means uh, it doesn't make, totally make the product. Okay? Isn't that fun? So that is just throwing some of our things together. Okay? Then I want to do the very last one with you. The very last one is number 70 and 74 is changing things. Okay, so I'm going to go to number 74C, my E naught equals 1.84, right? That's my original thing. What's my, what was my overall equation again? Taryn, can you read that out for me? My overall equation, like we got it out of A. Um, AU3 plus. Okay. Super. Okay. 
What we're doing in 74C is we're seeing what happens when we mess with the concentration. Everything we've done so far is assuming that we have one molar of everything. That doesn't always happen. Like you did at the lab yesterday in part B, you mess with the molarity. So in part B, or number two, part two of your lab, you change the molarity of the copper ions. So what you're going to use to figure out what the, molar what the, const or what the uh, voltage should have been is you're going to use the Nernst equation. The Nernst equation, okay? As you've read about, the Nernst equation is now on the opposite page and it's on the electrochemistry part of your sheet. Just like when we did delta G, what, else, what happens if delta G, if we're at different pressures and temperatures? We can see what happens to the voltage if we're at different temperatures and concentrations. Here it is. I'll just write it all out. Minus R, whoops. RT over NF, I want to not do the fancy F, ln of Q, which equals E naught minus 0 0.0592 over N log of Q. What's the difference between these two equations? Why wouldn't I just use one of them all the time? Why not What's that? In which one? The one on the right, we don't have a temperature. And it even says on your green sheet, at 25 degrees Celsius. If your temperature changes too, and not just your concentration, you have to use the one with the temperature in it. Because temperature is going to also, could also affect your cell. Okay? So, what's happening here? We are looking for how things change, or what's going to happen. So, I'm going to put an E. First of all, how, do I, how in the world do I figure out Q? What's Q? Notice how equilibrium never goes away. What's Q? Products over reactants. Do we include the ions and the solids or just the ions? Just the ions. So I'm going to put T plus that concentration cubed because there's a 3 in front of it. Oh, my goodness. And over the gold concentration. That's what Q is, the concentration of the ions. What do you think should happen without even calculating yet? If I have more gold ions what, than I do typically, what should happen? You think it will make more gold ions or we're going to shift it to the right and make more of the other stuff? If we want, just think Le Chatelier's. If I have a bunch of gold ions, what's it going to do? Shift right, and in the forward, it's going to be, it's going to tend to move towards the right and forward. If I add more thallium ions, it's going to tend to go this way. It's just like, it's just like uh, Le Chatelier. Okay, but let's put this into an equation. My E naught is 1.84. That's what we figured out a long time ago. The temperature it says is at 25 degrees, still, right? Yep, so I'm going to use the second equation because I'd rather not throw in RT and everything in NF if I don't need to. What's N? Moles of electrons, right? Same thing. What is it again? 3 in this case. Log of Q. What's my concentration of thallium ions according to this sheet? Bartlett? 1 times 10 to the negative, huh? 4. That's my thallium, and that has to be cubed, divided by my gold concentration, which is 1.0 times 10 to the negative second. Schneike. So essentially what we're doing is we're seeing what happens to this potential when the concentrations are not just 1 and 1, like they have been throughout everything else. We're assuming the concentrations are, all of our other problems, we're assuming that concentrations are just one for the molarity. Well, what if they change? In this case, our gold is higher. So for my money, 
but this is tripled. So I don't know if I want to put my money on it. I haven't calculated it. But since the gold is a higher number, I would think it's going to force it to the right and our voltage should go up a little bit. Anyone calculate it? In the end? Why do people give it a whirl? There's a lot of a lot of things, a lot of numbers to throw in there. 2.038 also? Awesome. So why? I want to go ahead and throw you some AP chemistry garb that or information that they gave us at Carlton. So the reason why eight we have more gold, the gold ion concentration is higher than the thallium concentration. This this is coming from a table leader who has graded AP tests for like 20 some years, this lady. She's amazing. She's super bright and she is very, very good at giving hints about what they're looking for. This increases the net forward tendency is the, the, the word she loves. What the heck does that mean? It just means it causes the reaction to go to the right more. The net forward, moving to the right, it tends to move to the right more. Overall, the net forward tendency, it increases the net forward tendency. We have more AU. So it's no IDKs, no IDKs. No, but they, they talk about that though, what they're looking for. I always write net forward tendency if you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> now, if we... So we're increasing the voltage, all right? Because we increase the number of, or the gold ion concentrations higher than the thallium, before with the 1.84, we assume this is one and this is one molar. Now we have a higher voltage of the gold than the thallium, so it's going to force it to the right more, which causes more voltage. Increases the net forward tendency. If it was the other way around, if there was more thallium, it would decrease the net forward tendency and we'd have a lower voltage. Let's say we just flip those, um, those values around. We would get a number less than 1.84 and that would decrease the net forward tendency. So our voltage is going down. It's not going to the right as much as we would expect at the standard one molar concentration. That's all they're saying. Compared to one molar, what's it doing? It's increasing the forward tendency. It's decreasing the forward tendency. It's that easy. It's not easy, but that's what happens when you mess with the concentration, okay? Um, as I hope you noticed from the lab yesterday, those little electrodes were weeny compared to what we showed you the other day where it had these huge bars of zinc. The size of the electrodes don't matter. Why do you care about the size of the electrodes for batteries? It's just about how long it lasts. That's it. The D batteries versus the double A's, they're the same voltage. You just get longer lasting out of the D batteries. They're the same exact voltage. So the size of the electrode does not affect the voltage. It affects the length that that voltage can last. Like the batteries that are on power drills and stuff. I mean, there's 18 volts, but then some of them are just huge. Some of them are smaller. I mean, if you're doing a big project, you want a big battery because it's going to last a while before you put it back on a recharger and push the electrons back the other way. That's why you put them on the recharger, just like your phones at night. You're putting it, pushing the electrons back the other way. 